Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah and we're gonna talk about books. Books, books, books. I don't know if this is the kind of video that other people have done, to be honest. I didn't check. <laughs> but this is a video that I wanted to make because I made this list for myself, personally, and then I thought, I'm a YouTuber, so I better share this. <laughs> so this is the first time I've ever done this kind of list, and it's my reading priorities for this year. I often find I get to the end of the year, and I'll have read a lot of books, like about 30 odd books, but I'm not always 100% happy with all of the books that I chose to read. Some of them I felt like were a waste of time. There are lots of books that I wanted to get round to reading, but just never got the chance to. Lots of books just come up throughout the year. Sometimes last minute, there's a book that I need to read for work, which I kind of count as a separate thing, but then it does eat into my pleasure reading time. But my pleasure reading time and my work reading time are a bit overlapped anyway. I don't know. But basically I want 2020 to be the best reading year of my life. And so the way that I've done that is I've created a plan. I just did a count and there are 20 books on my 2020 priorities list. That is a complete coincidence, but I'm very glad that it is quite the way under 30 books, which is what I tend to normally read, and it is half of my reading goal. I'm aiming to read 40 books this year, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm glad it's lower than both of those amounts because obviously new books come out, you get recommendations throughout the year, uh, or a book catches your eye, or whatever it is, and your reading priorities change, or like books come up and events come up, and you're like, oh, I need to read that book for X, Y, Z. You get it. But I thought it would still be useful for me to write down the books that I really want to read this year. These are the books that I want to make a point and an effort to consume. And these are books that have either been on my radar for ages, and I just haven't got around to yet, and what I've heard about that book sounds like a book that I would really enjoy, or it's been recommended to me a bunch of times from friends or people who I follow online, or it will be useful for work and my personal professional development in learning about sex and relationships and feminism and all of that, or it's just a book that I saw somewhere and piqued my interest. So we have a bunch of categories. Category one is sex books. So these are like non-fiction sex books that I kind of count as like work researchy books. Then just general non-fiction, adult fiction, YA. And then there's a final category, which is for rereads or rereads. I can never say that without it sounding really weird in my head. I've never been a big rereader, but that's something that I want to do more of this year because I'm like, this book brought me so much joy, but I read it so long ago and I don't really remember it. So it feels like a first read, but it's like guaranteed you're going to enjoy it. Before we get into the actual books in the categories, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently running a special offer over on my Patreon. So if you've ever thought about joining our community called The Common Room over there, then now is the time because if you join at the $5 a month or more, then you get a pin. So if you sign up by the 3rd of February, that is the deadline to be able to qualify to receive the special offer pin, then it will be sent out to you. I will leave a link in the description to where you can find out more info about The Common Room and Patreon. Okay, so let's get into it. First category, sex books. Mm -mm -mm. We have The Ultimate Guide to Sex and Disability by Miriam Kaufman, Corey Silverberg and Fran Odette. This book I discovered because it was in the bookshop of Shush Women's Store, which is a sex shop in London. I don't have a physical copy of this book yet, but I imagine I'll either buy it from them or maybe the Vagina Museum also stocks it. This isn't necessarily a book that I want to read from cover to cover in 2020. It is just a reference book that I want in my sex library. And I want to like dip in and read different bits of it because the intersection between sex and disability is something that I'm really interested in and very passionate about now since becoming disabled, but then also already like being a sex educator. So that is one that is top of my list this year. And then we have The Science of Happily Ever After by T or Ty Tashiro. And this is on my list. I think it's quite an old book, but it's on my list because Shan Booty recommends it all of the time. It is like one of her top relationships 
books. And I love Shan, she is a good friend, and I think the work that she does is amazing, and it's been recommended to me so many times from her. I'm just like, Hannah, you just need to get this book and you just need to read it. Also getting married this year, so maybe I'll find it useful. And then can everyone please calm down by Mae Martin. Mae Martin is a comedian whom I love, and she's written this book all about 21st century sexuality, and it is a young adult book as well. So really interested to read that because my sex education period books are also young adult. So I wanna read like more young adult sex ed to see how other people are doing it. And also May is great. So there's only three books on that list and none of them are sex books that I already own. And I keep on saying, I need to read the ones that are on my shelf already. But these are the ones that have just been coming up over and over again. So they are the priorities. Non fiction. Da -da -da -da. Finally, one that is already on my shelf. Invisible Women, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Criado Perez. This has been recommended so many times. Maybe it was gifted, maybe that's why I have a hardback version because I'm not really a hardback fan. So I think this was gifted and so many people rave about this book in terms of it angering them. And I love making myself angry about the patriarchy. There's been lots of news articles and think pieces that I've read that have been based on a lot of the research that has come out of this book. So I know some of the stories in it. I think like um, the thing about seatbelts not being designed for people with breasts. And so they're actually less safe for people with breasts. Don't quote me on that. I'm gonna read the book and find out. Next in nonfiction is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. Now this is a book that is coming out in May. Laura Bates is the woman behind Everyday Sexism and she's written a bunch of other books, which I actually haven't read any of her books, but there are two books of hers that are on my 2020 priorities list. So Men Who Hate Women, from what I have heard, is her investigation and her look into misogynist communities, incels, all of that stuff that we find very, very scary. And I am terrified and intrigued to read this book. Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. This is just one that a bunch of friends of mine have read and they have recommended it and it's about climate change and I feel like it's time that I read a book about climate change because I've read some tweets <laughs> and some news articles, but I think I just wanna delve a lot deeper into it this year. Against Elections by David Van Raybrook. This one came out in 2016 and it's one that I actually haven't heard all that much about. It hasn't been recommended to me. I'm pretty sure I just saw it in a bookshop and I was like, hmm, interesting, because I like book titles that challenge me I'm like, why would you be against elections? That is democracy. But I'm very intrigued to hear what the argument is against elections, basically, because I have been having some thoughts myself, especially around the fact that, I mean, our whole electoral system is fucked. And so, I mean, if it's broke, dismantle it and create something new? I don't know, I'll read the book and let you know. <laughs> and then Health at Every Size by Linda Bacon. Now this one came out in 2010. I did not realize it was quite an old book, but this book gets recommended by so many body positive activists and fat positive activists. And so I really want to make an effort to read that this year because as much as body positivity online can tell me that weight is not correlated to health. Everything that I've learned since I was a child tells me that the two are correlated, but I don't actually know any of the research or science behind it. It's all like a feeling, you know? Or like something that you think to be true because it's just something that you've been told your entire life. So I'm excited to read this book and delve into more of the scientific research behind weight and health and all of that stuff. And now we move on to adult fiction. Do, 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 do. Top of my list, not that it's in any order, is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a post-apocalyptic book about a touring Shakespeare theatre company, I believe. So many people have said how incredible this book is, and so I want to read it. It's one that just keeps cropping up, so 
2020 is the year I'll read Station Eleven. An American Marriage by Tiari Jones. This won the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2019. Heard great things, want to read it. It's about a black married couple and the husband goes to jail. I'm not sure if it's for something he did or didn't do, not sure. And then it's about letters between them and their relationship and then him getting out and I don't know. I've heard good things. Queenie by Candy Scarty Williams. The paperback for this comes out in February and you know how I love waiting for the paperback. I don't actually know too much about the plot of this. I believe it's set in London or at least it's set in the UK and it's about a young black woman and it's about her life and identity. And I don't know, is it a coming of age book? I'm not sure. Apparently it's very funny. Pretending by Holly Bourne. This is Holly's second adult novel and I adored her first, which is called How Do You Like Me Now? And this comes out in April and I'm very excited. Holly is another one who actually has two books on this list. And then Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read another book of hers last year, which was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I adored. And this one, Daisy Jones, has been recommended by so many people and a lot of people prefer it to Evelyn. And so I'm intrigued. Couldn't tell you the plot, not entirely sure what it is, but sometimes I quite like going into a book actually having no idea what it's about. <laughs> just going off recommendations. Just people said I would like this. So I'm gonna read it. Oh, and now we're on to YA. Mm -mm -mm. Still love me a good bit of YA, even though I'm about to turn 28. No judgment here. Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This has specifically been recommended to me by my friend Lex, Lex Croucher. She also has a YouTube channel. And again, don't know the plot of it, but I think it involves royalty and bisexuality. She said it's very similar to A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, and that's another one of Lex's favorites, and I loved that book, which I read last year, so I believe this one will also deliver. The Burning by Laura Bates. I believe this is Laura Bates's first fiction book. Not entirely sure. Came out last year, I think. It's set across two different timelines. I was at the Chelton Literature Festival and I saw her talk about it and so that's kind of what piqued my interest. Yeah, it's two timelines, like a present day revenge porn storyline, I believe, and then a past like witch trial and how the two are connected. And then we have The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. Holly again. This is her YA book that came out last year. Again, don't know the plot too much. I think it's about a breakup and unhealthy, toxic relationships, perhaps. But the title is just great. Again, love Holly's style of writing. It's very, very funny. So I'm excited to read that. And it's been a while since I've read a Holly Bourne YA book. So I'm excited to dive back in with this one. And then I wasn't sure what category to put this next one in, but I put it in YA, but let me know if that is wrong. It's The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman, which is the second book in the Book of Dust prequel trilogy to his Dark Materials. I listened to La Belle Sauvage, which was the first one on Audible when that first came out, to be honest, can't remember <laughs> much of it. I will have to remind myself of the plot, but I wanna read the next one. But I am also a bit confused because I've been rereading his Dark Materials and then also watching the TV show. So I'm like trying to remember what is happening in each trilogy. But yeah, that is on my list because I think it came out last year. But again, hardbacks, God damn it, hardbacks. And then the final category, which is the rereads, the rereads is basically just more Philip Pullman. So we have the Subtle Knife, hello, this is what I'm currently reading. And it's also a library book, very exciting. Um, so this is book two in His Dark Materials. And then also on my list is The Amber Spyglass, which is the third and final book in the His Dark Materials trilogy. I basically want to refresh my memory of everything that happens in the trilogy before season two of His Dark Materials comes out, which I'm guessing won't be until 2021 or maybe the end of this year. Who knows? I don't even know. But yeah, these two are on my reread list. And then there's one more book, which is on my reread list, which is The Raw Shark Text by Stephen Hall. This came up in my books before booktube video. It was a book that my dad read and gave to me and told me to read because he needed someone to talk to <laughs> about it, which is 
why you ever recommend a book to anyone really, isn't it? Just like, please, I need someone to talk to about this book, read it. And I remember it being brilliant and confusing and weird. And I want to read it again with an adult brain or a more mature reading brain. Ugh, what am I trying to say? Jesus Christ. I think I might be able to follow it a bit better as a 27 year old instead of a 17 year old. I don't know. We will see. Also, after I made that video about books before booktube, someone in the comments was like, do you remember the page in it that was like literally like letters and it was like made into a shark? And I was like, oh my God, yes I do. And so now I'm trying to find it. Like, look, this is one. What's What's that page? I don't know, but where's the shark one? Oh, it's here, it's here. Ba something happens, can't remember what. Oh my God, is this spoilers? I don't know. But then it's like blank page, blank page, blank page, blank page. <gasps> and then a tiny little shark on the page. And then, <laughs> you can't see. <laughs> uh, uh. Is it getting bigger? It is getting bigger. Ah, it's swimming towards you. What the fuck is this book? It's so weird. Ah, oh. Anyway, interesting format. It's playing around with structure and form of writing. But yeah, I can't believe I forgot that that happened in the book. So thank you person who commented that because wasn't that fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'd be really interested to hear what your 2020 reading priorities are in the comments, if that's a thing that you do already, or maybe this video has inspired you to create your 2020 reading priorities so that we can all have good reading years. Doesn't necessarily matter how many books you read, but as long as you you know you read the books that you want to read and you don't feel like you're wasting time on books that you are like, this isn't for me. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.